As the harvest continues on America's farms, we are reminded that even the biggest melons and pumpkins started out as tiny seeds. It's a similar journey for one of the nation's largest produce suppliers. It all began when a teenager named Sarah Fry took over her parents' failing farm and built it into a multi-state phenomenon. She's telling her story in the book, The Growing Season, How I Built a New Life and Saved an American Farm, which was published just this week. Life on the hill in, in southern Illinois uh, was very, it was very isolated. At times it was very harsh. It was brutal at times. Sarah Fry didn't exactly have a typical childhood growing up on a family farm with her parents and four older brothers in southern Illinois. We spent a lot of time hunting for our food, harvesting the food that, you know, we consumed. I remember the first time I saw the thermostat on a wall, and I thought, wow, this magic box, why am I cutting wood every day, you know, to heat, to heat our home? I knew it was unusual, but I enjoyed the work. I enjoyed the family bonds. You know, I was very, very close with my brothers growing up, and all of the bad was canceled out by the good and the love and the support that I felt with them. It is those same memories, good and bad, that Fry shares in her new book, The Growing Season. Parts of her story, like her first hunting excursion with her father and brothers, where as a little girl, she just wanted to prove that she belonged. When I shot my first rabbit, it was such a big deal. You know, they were cheering for me, and I grabbed the rabbit, and I held it in the air, and I'm like, see, you'll never leave me behind again. First shot, right? First shot, one shot, done. And from that moment forward, I thought I was the greatest hunter in, in, in the world. I didn't know it at the time, but uh, the, the rabbit was actually already dead. So <laughs> they had let me believe that I had killed it. And I think that that was one of those confidence-building exercises uh, that happened at a, at a very early age. It was that confidence Sarah then used selling melons with her mom. As a small girl, I was able to, you know, make deals, talk, talk to adults and, and, and sell things. And that was so much fun for me. It was freedom. At age 15, Sarah moved out of her parents' house. At 16, she had her own melon selling business. And at 17, with the family farm in financial distress, she secured a loan and bought it for $50,000. I never had a desire to stay here on the farm. Everything that I had done up until that very, very moment was to leave. And literally in a matter of seconds, a moment, I made the decision that I was going to stay. I didn't do it because I loved the land or the farm. I did it because I loved my family. I knew that if I left too, there would be nothing left here for us to come home to. While her brothers would help with the business, it was Sarah leading the charge. The turning point for Fry Farms, a produce distribution deal with Walmart. I met this woman who was setting her office up, and she happened to be a produce buyer. I'm like 19 years old. I have a pickup truck. I'm kind of still a one-woman show. In less than 30 minutes, she gave me you know, orders for semi truckloads worth of fruits and vegetables. I had the confidence in that moment to shake her hand and say, I can do this. But then when I walked out, I thought, I don't own a semi. I don't even know how to drive one. And <laughs> now I have to figure out how, how I'm going to deliver. She didn't just deliver, she got the attention of Harvard Business School, which made Sarah's Fry Farms Walmart deal the subject of a negotiating case study. They would ask the question, well, how did you do this? And at the time, it was like, well, I don't know. I just did it, you know, everything in my life. I just got used to, like, knocking down doors and, you know, showing up. That study forced me um, to have to think about some of the techniques that, that I had learned. And then it took me right back to some of the most difficult moments of my childhood different moments in my life that I had to have courage, I had to negotiate, or I had to take a stand. And then I started to understand it better myself. After starting with 80 acres in Illinois, Fry Farms has grown into thousands in seven states, growing fresh fruits and vegetables. And there is one in particular Sarah's become known for. You are known as America's pumpkin queen. How did that come about? Pumpkins are the first crop that I started to grow here. So I fell in love with pumpkins very early on. That particular crop was also part of my salvation. What helped me 
save this farm and to, you know, build the business, allow my four older brothers to come home and join me in the business. So I'm very fond of, of the pumpkin. Sarah is also fond of what's called the ugly fruit, using the produce normally rejected because it doesn't meet the right visual standards for juices, one of Fry Farm's latest ventures for sustainability and profitability. You're incorporating products that might otherwise be wasted. You're ultimately doing the right thing for the farm, the right thing for the planet. And then you're also doing the right thing for consumers because you're providing them with really healthy, clean, simple, delicious beverages. That ability to look past the surface imperfections and find the good or greater purpose appears to be both the essence of Sarah Fry and the growing season. What do you hope that people get out of this book? I hope that what people get out of the book is, is inspiration, that the book helps them to see through life's imperfections and hardships. It's like right now, everything that we're going through as a country with COVID, just know that there's a brighter season on the other side of this and to have the optimism of a farmer because the growing seasons that are fallow can teach us just as much as the growing seasons that are bountiful. We're actually learning some good stuff and we're gonna get through it and there's a brighter growing season to come. And Sarah had to send us some of the bounty at yeah. Fry Farms so that you could have it in person. Honestly, this book is inspiring. She actually writes it and attributes it once uh, more girls to steal thunder is what she oh, says. Wow. The idea of champion where you are. She really learned to be tough growing up in those tough circumstances on the farm. And it's what's been in the back of her mind every step of the way as she's grown this business and raising two sons as well right now. She saw opportunity and she saw it so young. Gosh. I just tried some of this watermelon juice. It's delicious. Love it. Love it. I yeah. know. Delicious it's tremendous. Stuff from her. I, yeah, I love really the story good. about how she she shot the rabbit. Right, and, the, and her family, her brothers and her dad knew they had the rabbit in the bush, sort of said, is that a rabbit over there? Instead of saying, you're great and you can do anything, they she shot it. the rabbit. She believed in herself at a young age. Yeah.